the show must go on even if I'm not home right now. Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com helping you create something awesome today. So this was not the planned video to release today. Hopefully that video will be edited and uploaded later this evening, but it is on topic because I wanna talk about YouTube and whether views or subscribers are more important. I wanna talk about view to subscriber ratios and I wanna put things in perspective. The questions I constantly, constantly get on this channel, despite all the myriad things I cover on this channel, whether they're YouTube related or not, is how to get more views on YouTube and how to get more subscribers on YouTube and how many should I have at this stage, this stage, this stage, this stage. I understand why those questions get asked. There are not a lot of clear answers on some of these things. There's conflicting information. There's information that frankly is also out there that is not true. So I'm going to try in as quick a time as possible to provide at least a little bit of clarity. Views and subscribers serve different purposes in YouTube and are associated with very different goals. Let's look at some things that are associated with subscribers that are specific to YouTube. YouTube success is not necessarily measured in subscribers under the hood, but publicly it is. People use their subscriber count to promote themselves and to like wear as some kind of status symbol sometimes. But realistically, YouTube subscriber counts unlock certain features and access in YouTube. A primary example being that you need 100 subscribers in order to get a custom URL, like youtube.com slash Roberto Blake 2. You need 100 subscribers to do that. Uh, there used to be some ways to get around that, now not so much. To be able to use certain features in YouTube like Super Chat, you need 1,000 subscribers. To be able to use features like the credit system where you can credit your collaborators or your editor or someone else that was involved with your project, you need 10,000 subscribers. At 10,000 subscribers, you also get access to YouTube spaces just depending on where you live, California, New York, London, etc. Based on your subscriber count, you can access the YouTube space, which is a studio space where you get access to high-end equipment, different sets, and things that can help you. So there is some truth and validity to YouTube subscriber count mattering when it comes to unlocking these features and getting access. Once you reach 100,000 subscribers, you have pretty much almost unlimited access to the YouTube space in terms of what it allows, meaning you get the highest level. You be, you're able to uh, use the YouTube studio space for three days. YouTube acknowledges you with a silver play button. This is actually kind of a big deal, which is why a lot of people are shooting for that goal. It's not just the vanity number, which for a lot of people it is, but it would give them more resources to be able to create their best content. It means that 100,000 subscribers, they for sure unlocked every every under the hood feature you can in the YouTube system, and so that matters. Now, once you start getting into the 1 million and 10 million subscriber thing, that just has to do more with um, the impact that you've made, or maybe for some people it's status or some fame or notoriety, it's that kind of thing. After 100,000 subscribers, everything else is pretty much a formality or it's just a nice to have. In terms of how it actually impacts your ability to do anything in YouTube, after 100,000, you can pretty much do anything. After 10,000, you can do like 90% of it from a technical level. So those are the numbers in terms of subscribers that matter. Let's talk about views. Since the YouTube ad boycott took place earlier this year, the rules and community guidelines have changed with regard to YouTube monetization and AdSense, the primary way that YouTubers make money, which is through ads that display in front of the YouTube video itself or as an overlay ad or as an ad on the side sidebar, those things help YouTubers make money, support their income, and it's the easiest way to monetize your YouTube channel and profit from it. Now, YouTube has recently changed things to where you could just enter into the partner program with no real prerequisite. Now you need 10,000 views overall on your channel as a whole to be considered for monetization, at which point then you apply to the partner program and based on your channel being analyzed, you're either approved or disapproved. And so you have to be able to meet some specific criteria and community guidelines for that. So now there is a view count that actually makes a difference as to whether you can make money on YouTube or not. 
in general, views and how many views you get actually determine how much money you make on YouTube. You don't get to make a living on YouTube just because you have 100,000 subscribers or a million subscribers. You can have as many subscribers as you want, but if your monthly view count doesn't give you enough ads to support that in terms of money, then it's a problem. In order to make a living off of YouTube, most people have to do at least 1 million views per month in order to make enough ad revenue to make a living if the number you're going for is the median average salary in the United States of America, then when you look at the average CPM rate, which is how much money are you getting paid per thousand views on a YouTube channel, and then when you consider that less than half of the views on YouTube channels display ads, well, that's how I come up with that number. This number will not be the same for everybody. I could theoretically make a living off of YouTube with a substantially smaller view count because more of my videos are monetized with ads and because of the type of ads my channel targets, I get a higher overall rate. So if your goal is money, views matter much more than subscribers, right? Because ad revenue is how you're generating your money. Ad revenue is based on views. Subscribers doesn't necessarily translate to dollars. Subscribers doesn't always translate to views based on your type of channel. So that is something to think about. Do you value the status in YouTube via the subscriber count? And is that somehow leverage for you? Or do you need actual cash? Because if it's actual cash, you need views. If it is leverage, maybe subscribers do that if that's your goal. Or if your goal is community, then maybe subscribers are community and maybe that is the angle that you're playing. It's certainly something that I'm looking at is more of a community development aspect because my channel does different content. If you're watching this YouTuber Friday style video, there's a very good chance that you have never watched one of my Monday graphic design videos. There is a chance that maybe you don't watch my small business videos. There's a chance that you don't watch my videos about other social media platforms. There's a chance that maybe you don't watch my speaking engagement videos if they are not about YouTube. But all of those other videos that I make are valuable to someone who's not you and they also are a subscriber of mine. So there's a chance that if you tuned into this video, you may not watch the other six videos that I produce in a week. You may not watch the other 10 videos that I produce in a month or 20 or 30 or whatever it is. And guess what? That is okay because my strategy does not require you to. In my particular case, and in the case of many online YouTube channels that do a diversity of content, it's not necessary for the channel or for the money that the YouTuber is trying to make for you to watch every single video. There are, however, channels where someone is trying to get you to watch every single video. There are channels where you want to watch every single video. If you tuned into someone for their vlogs, then guess what? You want to watch their vlogs. You are attached to them as an individual, as a person. Or if you tuned into somebody because they're playing one game, you might have subscribed to them, but now they're not playing that game, and guess what? You're not watching every video. So. View to subscriber ratio is something that a lot of people use in YouTube to determine whether a channel is alive or dead or whether it's a successful channel or not, but that doesn't take into uh, context the relationship that the YouTuber has with their audience and what they're trying to accomplish, nor does it take into consideration that every single YouTube channel is different. Of course there are best practices, of course there are things that are going to be similar or are going to line up. But at the end of the day, everyone's channel is their channel. Your channel will not grow as fast as your friends, even if you do the same content. It's just not practical. So I can't tell you how long it takes to get to 100 subscribers or 1,000 subscribers or 100,000 subscribers, and there's no point in running averages because your experience, your mileage will vary. It's gonna be based on the relationship you're able to form with the audience. It's gonna be based on how passionate you are about the content. There are people who have been around in YouTube for 10 years and don't have 50,000 subscribers, and there are people who have been around for two years and have two million. So you can't 
just judge all YouTube channels the same. You can't judge your success against your friends or someone you admire or your contemporaries. The best you can do is work on your channel as much as possible, follow best practices, look at things that are going on in the community, look at videos from Tim Schmoyer or Brian G. Johnson or Nick Nimmin or Daryl Eves or Sonny Larduzzi or Gideon Shalwick or David Walsh or Jeremy Vest or Amy Schmittauer or Owen Hemsath, any number of people who have been making video content and studying the business and marketing and the data for years can probably give you a lot of practical advice for your channel. Not just me, but all of us here that are on that side of the community. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it cleared up some things about your channel, other channels that you're looking at, questions you might have, or even gives you a better understanding of my channel and why the numbers are what they are and why it's so confusing to so many of you. I get this comment every week about why do you have 200,000 plus subscribers and why do you have X amount of views per video? Look. I know which videos will get me a half million views, okay? I've done it before. I know which videos will get me 100,000 views, but I also know which videos you guys are asking for in the comments. And so, if you want me to keep making videos that will help you with one problem that you have that maybe the other 499,000 people don't have, I want to make those videos for you. So ask me questions in the comments and I will keep making those videos and maybe 5,000 of you will watch and maybe a half a million of you will watch Either way, I'll be fine. So, with that said, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. Watch all of the videos on the channel if you're so concerned about the numbers. As always, you guys, thanks so very much for watching, and don't forget, create something awesome today. Take care.